Hello my soccer universe. Stormy weather outside, so if you hear some stuff, this is a storm that's coming down here, but also stormy weather in Serie A, especially over Turin and Juventus, where we have an another verdict. This time it's only 10 points, but it's probably enough to see Juventus not going into the Champions League. And I really it's just so uh, weird because I was about to make a Serie A video last week, but I was just bumming up too close to the Champions League rematch between Milan and Inter. Uh, that I decided, nah, uh, it's just too stressful. And also this one comes out relatively late. And yes, tonight is the f uh, Coppa Italia final, but I decided to keep it out. But if I would have made that video a week, a week ago, I would have been lamenting Milan's bad form and how the season goes pear-shaped. And a week later, everything looks good for Milan again. And that is to me really, really remarkable how you are yourself in a really bad situation. You had a little bit of a bounce back win. However, not only do, did Juventus not play well in the league, they got punished again. And I want to start with this 10-point punishment before we go into the hap happenings of the last two rounds. Uh, more or less, uh, and it's really, really difficult for me how to incorporate this here. So uh, the Olympic Committee gave this um, verdict back uh, to uh, the Football Federation by saying, you know, um, we keep all the bans for in the individual, we keep it up, but there's a little too little justification why you gave 15 points. You know, uh, someone demanded only nine points. Now you give 15 points. There needs to be a little bit more justification behind it. Please take it up again, which we kind of knew that this is, this means that Juve is not out of it. The only question for me at the moment is, will there be appeals process that I have not really gotten out? So they came back, uh, the prosecution demanded 11 points, it became 10 points with the reasoning because of the Plus Valenza case, so basically overvaluing the, uh, the player value in transfer business and thus uh, making the books look nicer because of that, Juventus will be deducted the 10 points to not make it into the Champions League next season and it was also easier for them uh, to do so because the Europa League uh, Juventus is out and they will not win. This would have been another path to go into the Champions League. Um, and yeah, um, I think it's also to the degree that uh, you leave it also open for UEFA. Because let's say you will pull off the stunt. And it is really, really a stunt at the moment if they can pull this off um, to make it into the Champions League. That, you know, UEFA could also say, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, I'm gonna do something that I'm usually not doing. I'm gonna give you already the standings uh, before and after to really make a point uh, who was profiting from this one and who was the damaged party. You see here on the left side, you see uh, the, the standings without the points deduction where you would sit now in a um, second place, Champions League uh, relatively secure. Overall, with a hard match against Milan coming up, where you could seal the deal, you see Milan only 20% making the Champions League. With the 10 point deduction, it is the same table, it's just one is with and one is without the 10 points. And that's the table that I'm gonna use for now. With the 10 points deduction, you will now suddenly are in seventh spot. So, even outside the European ranks, and if Fiorentina would win the cup final, this would mean only the top six go into Europe. Uh, should Inter win it, and seventh would give you the Conference League. Um, and suddenly Milan looks super safe. 89%. This is a 70% uh, swing in favor of Milan. So it means all that Lazio are already qualified for the Champions League and Inter are more or less qualified for the Champions League. So uh, while Lazio and Inter are probably some small benefactors of the verdict, the big one, the absolute biggest one, is of course Milan. And that adds a little bit spice to their meeting on the upcoming weekend uh, with more spice added by the fact that the Milan fans will not travel to Turin because of the high ticket prices. I think uh, they are demanding 80 euros in the away section which the Milan fans said cannot happen. 
Um, there have been some reactions to the verdict, uh, especially I read the one from Mourinho who finds it a little, little bit unfair. I can see his point, but I also think that Mourinho knows, you know, the Plus Valenza case is not done. Uh, there have been also the two Roman teams and others have been charged in this regard. So there might be something coming. So there's, it's a little bit self-serving in a way. And for you, it's also not done yet. Uh, there will probably a UEFA ban could be coming. Uh, and there are also other charges, criminal investigations against Juventus that could also have an impact. So I think Juventus are not out of trouble by any means. Um, their season so far, although not pretty to watch, has been overall a rather successful one. However, uh, that was always a dark cloud hanging over that team. And before we go into it, I want to add another story, uh, which is just unfathomable to me. Uh, and it comes out of Naples. Italian media are going with the story that Spalletti is not going to continue. Because, uh, and it is so idiotic, and this is why uh, De, 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 De Laurentiis, for whatever he is building, however he's running the club, he brought Napoli in steady waters and made them a European top team. For that, he deserves all the credit. However, uh, how the way he's running the club sometimes is a little bit, let's say, contentious. In this case, um, he basically, on the day that they were celebrating a championship, he sent an email to Spalletti, who had a two-year contract um, with an additional option and basically saying, yeah, we, uh, your option has been triggered. You will stay another year here. Uh, not exactly like that, but, you know, very impersonal. There was no personal communication. And Spalletti definitely was hurt by that part of uh, the communication. Uh, not feeling very much appreciated and we it literally has to be said yes the players did the, uh, did it on the field but what Spalletti and um, sports sports sporting director whose name escapes me now have built here is extraordinary I think Spalletti would deserve a raise and all that kind of kind of, kind of, kind of stuff uh, and a little bit more recognition you could see it in the game against Inter when uh, the captain Di Lorenzo scores the goal he made it a point to run towards Spalletti. Seemingly, they have smoothed this over with a dinner. However, the, um, um, the statements afterwards were not really smart with Dolorente saying, if uh, Spalletti wants to fly away, we're not going to clip his wings. And Spalletti saying, because he's a farmer, I don't need wings, I need boots. You know, uh, Probably I'm not a Neapolitan or Italian, so for, for me those things uh, sound maybe even more cryptic than they're meant to be. And I'm not... In any case, it's a really, really weird scenario. And I mean, I've been even reading it, they're learning it wants to have Klopp now, or uh, realistically it's between the Zerbi and uh, Italiano for, uh, to take over if it was really the case. But... I think the fans will knock the doors down at De Laurentiis uh, and at Na Na Napoli if Spalletti goes. Because I think if Spalletti goes, this could also, also mean that many other big players will be going. Uh, because it's much easier for them to say, yeah, we're going to take a leave. So yeah, Serie A never, never, never gets boring. And with that, let's go into the... Round th 35 that we had uh, on the midweek, uh, mid-May weekend, where actually the first results were so all in favor of Milan, with uh, Lazio only managing a two late 2-2 two -two draw. I remember we, I was watching that in my hotel room in Vienna, and it could have been more. Uh, Lecce missed the pan -pan penalty, and Immobile gives them a lead. Uh, Udin, before the half and after the half, gives Lecce the lead, and it was all, the, all all deserved. In the end, yes, Milinkovic Savic gives them an equalizer, but this was definitely points dropped, and this was exactly what I was hoping for, that uh, Milan, despite being a little bit behind in the race now, that they could catch Lazio. I didn't think they could catch Inter. Even more so, there was no danger coming from Atalanta, because Salernitana beat them with uh, Candreva, who scored already a great goal against Inter, although it was not meant to be. <laughs> it was more an accident. Uh, again, getting a winner very, very late on. Piontek assisting that, that, that one. So that result going to Milan. And what does Milan do? 
the most atrocious performance that I have seen. And this is like uh, two years ago. They also played in Spezia and came up with a nothing per performance that more or less meant that Inter can get uh, make some distance between them and will cruise to, 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 to a title. Um, Tonale hit the post early on and that was it. There was nothing in there. It was seemingly no one wants to get hurt. Uh, the, uh, even the, I mean, the lineup was actually relatively reasonable, but you know, with Rebic up front, uh, uh, it was just, it was a nothing performance. It was horrible to watch. I was hoping a second half that comes a little bit more, but then you cannot defend a corner. That was the only, uh, I mean, uh, Spezia was always uh, dangerous on the car counter. They don't want to take anything away from it. I think they did the right thing, what you had to do there. Because you know, you just have to stay solid, 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 solid and hit, hit him a counter attack, and then it's a corner. This atrociously defender Wisniewski uh, puts in a rebound. And then admittedly Esposito, a uh, free kick, brilliant one, makes it 2-0. And yeah, <sighs> I was deflated. At that moment I was done with the season. And it didn't help that Inter then had really no trouble disposing Sassuolo. Um, I mean, 4-2 looks a little a little bit close, and yes, Berardi had a goal early on. This is allowed, but you know, Lukaku, who plays in the league, scores. Lautaro, I was also an uncle, it was 3-0. Then they put two to back. I was kind of hoping maybe they can get an equalizer, but in the end, Inter with another Lukaku goal gets a fully deserved 4-2 win. Um, the Spezia win over Milan also made, it was a big result in the relegation battle and then Torino winning at Verona, meaning Verona getting in trouble. And Verona d looked kind of on the way to safety, but maybe it was a little bit too soon. Fiorentina 2-0 over Udine, then uh, Napoli seemingly on the beach, losing 2-0 at Monza. Monza having beaten all the big uh, teams except for Milan. Isn't there an owner that was related to, to Milan? But I find it rather re re remarkable. A uh, great season for Monza. Um, to nil over Napoli. Roma can only imagine nil and Rosso also a result falling Milan's way. You just didn't capitalize. And then Juve uh, also getting a rather nasty 2-0 um, win over Cremonese. Nothing really to talk home about, but it was all Europa League then. And Sampdoria were already down playing a 1-1 against Empoli. On this past weekend, uh, again, uh, the results were not falling Milan's way this much. Uh, but the first one I want to talk about is Cremonese, now definitely relegated after losing to Udine. But that was, uh, for me as an Austrian, an interesting one. Because Marco Nautovic was back in the starting line lineup and there are rumors that he's not so happy with coach Diago Motta and probably will go to Milan, which I find rather curious. Um, he gets the first goal and then Stefan Porsche, an Austrian defender, who interestingly enough was the co-commentator for the return leg uh, of the Champions League semi-final, found that in interesting. He scores uh, the third goal, so both Austrians scoring, making Bologna a rather popular team at the moment. In Austria, of course, and you know, Ferguson from Scotland also, all was there. so it was all very in in international in the end. It wasn't the only downside was the yellow red for Orsolini, but overall it was 5-0 before in stoppage time Giovanni pulls one back. Cremonese after one year uh, Serie A trip going back down to Serie B. And I have to say I enjoyed they were not a defensive side, but they were clearly outmatched overall. Uh, Atalanta, again, more trouble for uh, Verona, especially in light of other results uh, not going their way. Lazovic actually gave Verona the lead in Bermuda, Ber but Zappa Costa, Iki, Kresna, Pasaric and Hoylund turned the game around. Milan against Sampdoria, honestly, it was exactly what was needed. The only thing that really annoyed me was the equalizer, because the uh, Brian Diaz was uh, sensational. I mean, he uh, assisted uh, two goals, uh, made a third, and I think he was even fouled for the penalty, as far, far as I know. He assists really nicely uh, Leao, who makes it 1 0, and I thought, now you're, you're cruising. And then Cagliarella Zanoli completely goes over Theo Hernandez, who is not hitting form exactly the opposite. He's, he's probably one of the worst players at the moment, which is not good because he's very essential for going forward. And I think the goal against Lazio was kind of a little bit of a blip there. 
Fortunately, Brian Diaz corner is then converted by Giroud uh, shortly thereafter, and then Giroud converts a penalty, easing my nerves. And then uh, it was the Brian Diaz show who really did a few uh, highlight stuff, uh, very nicely assisted by Tonali to make it 4-4-1. Uh, then Lau also assists Giroud who gets a hat trick. The only thing is, why did Giles de Ketteler not score in that one? Uh, that was the one one game where he could have really uh, run up the score, but on the other side, you know, it's 5-1. All that Milan needed at that point. Uh, I already said it, Spezia getting a nil-nil against Lecce. Uh, I think, I mean, Lecce probably would have wanted a win. Both would have needed needed the win more. But uh, with Verona losing, you actually get a little bit more distance in there. Uh, it looks more and more like that Verona are the team uh, going down. Uh, Torino, Fiorentina play out a 1-1 draw. And then Napoli uh, complete a, another feat by beating Inter. And now they have beaten every single team in Serie A this season, and they actually showed up. However, it also has, has, has to be said that not only did Inter kind of, um, you know, rotate the squad a little bit because they have the cup final coming up, and they were just coming from the Champions League. And then you play Gagliardini, who commits five fouls, gets two yellow, yellow cards, and is sent off. Um, doesn't make it easier. All the goals were more or less highlight real goals. Anguissa, really nice uh, shot. Um, uh, two nil was well, was his out and out of nowhere. Di Marco cross that Lukaku kind of uh, pokes in uh, was really really a weird goal. But then right after, probably the favorite goal of, of them by Di Di Lorenzo again assisted by Anguissa outside shot up in the upper corner. Brilliant stuff. And then he was celebrating with Spalletti, Napoli. Beating Inter, which is what I was hoping they 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 would do. Um, again, Inter gave them a little a little bit of the assist, and now saying that Napoli proved that they are the best team at the moment. I think it would have been a much tighter game if Inter would have played a full squad and there was something on the line. I still think that at this very moment Inter are stronger over the entire season. Napoli have been the best team. I don't want to take that away from them. Uh, but you know, it's one of those uh, that ha that were not meant to be. In a little way, like it was uh, the, the, this year, we never saw Manchester City and Arsenal meeting at their almost high, at their best levels, and that was happening here as well. And then Gaetano, local guy, also scores the, the third. The third one gives Napoli more reason to celebrate. Uh, I was hoping that Undine will take points at Lazio and this was a game that was played. I knew that the verdict is coming, but it was played before the verdict was given. I was really hoping for another points drop for Lazio and then Immobile, uh, you know, falls easily, gets a penalty. Not sure if it was a penalty, converts it. Other than that, that was an uh, awful, 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 awful game. But it means it was a big, big result for Lazio. Okay, and then Monday's results. Um, and again, the verdict came somewhere before Empoli Juve. Uh, I mean, again, another result. Salsa, I'm, there's a reason I'm wearing Salsa down. They had two really great results uh, at the Olympico. Cantareva scoring an absolutely great goal. A deep ball from Cantareva that he just takes out of mid air on the turn. You gotta see this was an absolute brilliant goal. Uh, Roma thought they had gotten the eagle equalizer through Ibanez. However, there was a handball in the builder, but you know, one of those that was more involuntary. That I think this is a rule that we have to change. Roma fight back. El Sharavi gets an equalizer, but uh, short shot there after Pionte kind of stumbles the ball through uh, Dia, who puts it into internet in really nice spinorama uh, backhill fashion. So two highlight goals. Although I have I have have said the second one was a little bit more stumbled, and then it's they were holding on to that lead. A lead. I mean, uh, Salentana are already safe, but that would have actually put another stamp on their uh, campaign. Nemanja Matic after a corner, Roma had a really hard time break, breaking down, gets the equalizer. And it has to be said that uh, this is again a Roma team that just came from the Europa League, that is really a uh, depleted squad. So I don't expect much from Roma. And then right before the Empoli game, the word came in. And yeah, I think the result speaks for, for itself. You were probably for the first 15 minutes the better team, but then uh, Ciccio Caputo uh, uh, converts a penalty and Luperto Shosha they have to makes it 2 0. And then uh, Caputo right after have 3 0, and the game is done and dusted. Yes, Chiesa can pull one back, but then Piccoli, who had missed an open player next to him uh, just before that 
to make it soon a 4-1. Converges 4-1, and I don't know what this means for Juventus at this moment. Um, I still want, want to say I don't think that the players really heard much about the verdict at this point. I think this could have been avoided. However, the defeat to Sevilla was definitely deflating. Uh, as great of a game as this was, uh, it must have hurt big, 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 big time to lose that game. And so we come now to the current standings, including another 10 points penalty. We saw it before. The top four look kind of set because with two rounds to go and a three-point cushion onto Atalanta, Milan look rather, rather safe. You need more or less one win and you are in because you have the tiebreaker over Atalanta. Roma potentially could catch you if you lose twice. You don't hold the tiebreaker there. Don't really see it happening. Um, on the bottom, it is Spezia and Ellas uh, now more or less level with uh, Spezia having a slight advantage overall, um, but still to go. But I think that Ellas is trending in the wrong direction there. And because of the Cup, Cup final, seventh place could mean Europe. And yeah, you will also look rather safe there. I don't think at Monza and Fiorentina. Uh, Mon Fiorentina cannot catch Juve anymore and Monza will also not. So, I mean, Juve will finish top seven. The question is, will this be enough for Europe or not? Upcoming games, we have Wednesday evening uh, the cup final between Inter and Fiorentina. Normally, you would say Inter will win that one easily. However, Fiorentina, Italiana has some cup credentials as well. So, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm very much looking forward to that one, although I do expect... I really expect an easy Inter win right there. Fiorentina have already said they'd rather win the European one than the uh, local trophy, but they also have not won since 2001. Then the upcoming can come around. We have two, re uh, three actually really big games. Fiorentina against Roma is a Serie A classic. We have then Inter against Atalanta. Um, that is already a game that could put Atalanta out of the running for the final spot because Milan holds the tiebreaker. So at the point that you and Milan take the uh, field, it might not matter anymore, which is actually something that I'm a little bit hoping for in a way. But you know, I think Milan looks safe. I don't know about the appeals process for, uh, for, for, for 10 points. As far as it looks now, it seems like it's final and, you know, um, the season is almost over. You cannot do much. Uh, you need to get a quick verdict and Italian courts don't work that fast. In any case, the storm has subsided. Time to quit the video as well. Please let me know what you thought about all the happenings in Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Add a line if you want to add something or say something and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!